Good morning, y'all, and welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. I'm Matt, and today we've got a very requested topic. You often are talking about heat-tolerant trees, and today we're talking about the Heat Seeker Series. We're always trying to push that envelope and get things even more heat-tolerant. Hey, I'm Tim, and these zone pushers are going to be something that you're going to really like. The Heat Seeker Series is awesome. We love them. A lot of them are our introductions, some we put names on. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our weekly emails on Mr. Maple. We are working so hard to bring you cool plants every single week, and we release them every Tuesday at 10 a.m. And we sign up for that email, you get a heads up of what's coming out at 9 a.m., an hour ahead of time. So you want to sign up for that email. So at Mr. Maple, we have an entire development program. We call it the Area 51 program, and this is where we look at cool and interesting plants. Uh, we call it Area 51 because we have to hide those things away from everybody else until they're ready. And so nobody goes in or out without clearance. So these are all plants from our Area 51 collection. They're plants that We've either evaluated here or put a name on here, and we've selected these specifically for having traits that are more heat tolerant. Now we're calling that the Heat Seeker series. Think of it like the Ghost series. We've actually trademarked this series. We've never patented or trademarked a specific tree, although I've had a lot of interest in a few of these for that, but we have trademarked this series. Think of it as a new series of maples that uh, can push the envelope for that heat tolerance and give you everything you love in a Japanese maple, but even more durable for the heat. Yeah, uh, Ace of Olive Varanum. I think Matt and I were giving a talk at the SNA conference, and we started talking about Olive Varanum, and all the nurserymen's heads popped up because they know how heat tolerant they are. For years, people in Texas, in Florida, have just been raving about the heat tolerance of Ace of Olive Varanum. The straight species is fantastic, but when you start getting some of these ones that have ha hybridized a little bit with Japanese maples, you start to get those traits that everyone loves about Japanese maples in an Ace of Olive Varanum that's extremely heat tolerant. So everything we're talking about here today in the Heat Seeker series is an Acer Palmatum X Oliviarinum hybrid. So they have some genetics of an Acer Oliviarinum style, also with an Acer Palmatum. And that's what we believe gives them that exceptional heat tolerance, but also some unique new traits. So you're getting what you love from that Acer Palmatum side, some diversity of foliage and color, but also that heat tolerant characteristic of the Acer Oliviarinum. Now Acer Oliviarinum is a native of China, so it's a hybrid with a Japanese maple. They come from more hot zones there in China, so you can actually see those thriving in extremely high heat temperatures. And this makes an excellent starting point. Uh, you know, it's where we love to be as far as development, because I think this makes an excellent plant for developing new heat tolerant plants, especially for the South, but really anywhere where you want something that's gonna thrive and just be exceptionally heat tolerant for a Japanese maple. So I know many of y'all may be looking at the table and say, I only know three maples on the, the Heat Seeker series. And that's because two of these that we'll talk about at the end are in the development stages. Uh, we've found these awesome traits, but we'll start out first with a mountain one, one's Matt named. Hot Blonde. Uh, this one I actually named after my wife, so I got some extra credit for naming Hot Blonde after Amy. Uh, it was kind of a joke at first, and uh, we uh, put the working name of Hot Blonde on it. Love this plant for its amazing heat tolerant capabilities, but also it is electric yellow. So this one, especially when it leaves out in the early spring, is gonna be one of the brightest yellow cultivars you'll see. Uh, some really nice accentuation around each leaf with some bright pink outlier too on each leaf. Each leaf has a little, almost stenciled bright pink border to it in the early spring. I get as equally many comments about this plant for its fall color. The fall color is exceptional. It holds typically longer than most other plants and it is a neon pink fall color. Now, Hot Blonde is an amazing plant. I think originally we put the name Hot Blonde on it, then we changed it to Golden Ticket, and then Tom Rainey said, hey, I've got a plant, message us, name, uh, trademark Golden Ticket. So we switched it back to Hot Blonde, and it's a better name anyways. The, this plant loves the sun. If you put it in the sunlight, it takes off like a weed. It's an exceptional, good grower. And in the sunlight, this, uh, pink that you see up here is a mm -hmm. bright orange. I mean, it just throws out amazing colors with that yellow and orange even throughout the summer. And some salmon pinks in the spring, some yellows all across the, the plant with orange new growth. And like Matt talked about, that fall color is exquisite. Uh, we had actually uh, milled one of these to Talon Buckholz. And he started sending us photos back of the plant right. and said, wow, check out this fall color. You know when he gets color. that excited about when we've hit on something. He, this was probably the cultivar that we named that he was the most excited about of anything we've ever released. He, he liked the name, he liked the colors. Um, I, I don't know that we've ever had as many compliments from him on one we've named. But. Yeah, and I, I think it's, it may be our best introduction to date. 
I thought uh, a lot of interest about patenting it in Europe. Uh, we never have put a patent on a Japanese maple because it tends to make them disappear. Uh, nurserymen like the ones that aren't patented. Uh, but it's an awesome plant. Uh, it's one that does typically exceed the growth rate or meet the growth rate of Ceres. So it's one of the faster growing plants. Um, we actually found this as a seedling and evaluated it and watched this for several years. I know several of my customers that have this, uh, you know, like on the battery in Charleston, I have a customer that has it there and her tree is around 14 feet and she's probably only had that tree since maybe 2018, 2019 timeframe. So it was a, a small plant then, but it certainly gets out there. Excellent heat tolerant Japanese maples. Now we list all of our Acer Liviarinum uh, subspecies Liviarinum hybrids as zone six through nine. These are very heat tolerant plants. Uh, full disclosure, I have people growing this in zone five with great success. We're gonna give it a few more years in zone five before we truly rate it a zone five plant. But I have a, a plethora of customers growing this in zone five. So we do think that's gonna be a possibility. That palmatum ancestry may be making it a little bit more durable for that zone five climate. Uh, but it certainly uh, is a, a, a winner zone six through nine for us. Uh, we've had probably one of the greatest responses of any of our introductions from that hot blonde. It's the one that kicked off our heat seeker series, uh, defined what we're gonna go with for that but it definitely added, I'd say, the most new interest as well. And the, the spring color, even though we've talked about it before, sometimes it can leaf out a little more olive, but then it'll go to a red border on a yellow leaf. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, even with some of the summer growth, there's a little bit of a red border around the yellow, and so it's outlined. I mean, yeah. the hot blonde, every time of the season, it's one of those plants that when we first started selling it, we started realizing it was pretty good because we have a thousand varieties of Japanese maples. Right. And people would come back and they'd say, I want to get another hot blonde for my yard. You don't want another fright? No, I want to get another hot blonde. It, and so uh, we it, started. It, it was a hot ticket item. It still is on our website. It sells out pretty quickly when we get it up. We've increased our numbers. So when we're listing those now, they're in the hundreds instead of in the teens. Uh, and so uh, when those were in the 20s, as far as numbers wise, uh, yeah, it was a hot ticket item for sure. But we, we always are increasing the numbers on these. All the ones you're seeing here are. Uh, something that we plan on making staples in our nursery. That's why we put a series on it and we continue to push the envelope on all these. I was talking to a customer yesterday, just yesterday, who was talking about the fall color in Michigan on Hot Blonde and how it lasted so long, almost longer than any other of the maples that he had. Mm -hmm. And with that just vibrant orange red, he's like, it's outstanding. And it's funny because he's loving this plant. And then we've got people growing it in full sun in Charleston. Right. We're posting on uh, Facebook saying, man, I love this plant. I've had this plant for seven years and look how great it's grown in the high right. heat. So it, it's probably one of our, I mean, it's an awesome plant. When I first started taking pictures of this fall color, I would often include my hand in the photo just to prove that it wasn't a Photoshop photo. I'm like, no one's going to believe it's this neon electric pink red. And so I'd have to get my hand in there for perspective to show people that it actually gets this color. So, Let's move on down the table, Tim. Uh, this is probably one of the faster of the Heat Seeker series to sell out for us as well. Yeah. Now, I'd like to reiterate, we're shooting this video in late July of 2022. So uh, we actually are gonna be in August very soon. These colors are indicative of late summer. Uh, if we had this one in early spring, it'd be electric pink. So these sizes you see here on the table are the sizes they currently are here at the nursery right now. Keep in mind, if you're watching this at a later time or an earlier time, they could be smaller or larger. But these next two that we've got here are amazing. And these, uh, their selections, they're actually found by Masi Oceano, and then we got the privilege of being able to put the name on them. Uh, th this one here originally, we brought it over as Nakahara Benny, and then realized, become realized that it was the original code name for it was Nakahara Benny B. Oddly enough, that wasn't really a name, it was a working name, a code name mm -hmm. for basically saying this uh, Olive Rainum has some red new growth to it, Benny, and it would do well in the Nakahara region of Japan, which is very heat tolerant. So it was a, a way of saying, hey, this is a really heat tolerant Japanese maple, but it wasn't really a name on it. So we asked Masayoshi Yano, hey, could we put a name on this since Nakahara Benny B is a code name? And we ended up going with Hot Tamale. Yeah, Hot Tamale was one that Yano selected there in World Maple Park. He has a prominent Acer Liviernum that's gonna show up later in the story too. We've collected some seedlings off of it as well. Uh, but this is a prominent Acer Liviernum there in World Maple Park. And Yano-san had collected Nakahara Benny A and B and had had these as working names only. And so we talked to Yano and he said, if you're gonna put these out into the trade, you should put your own name on them 
and put a cultivar name on them. And it only made sense with Hot Blonde to stick with that Heat Seekers developmental series. So calling it Heat Seekers, we wanted to put Hot in the name. Uh, we did like the name Hot Tamale a lot anyway, so that one came up quick. Uh, Hot Tamale is exceptionally heat tolerant. As you can see right now in late July, it is a little bit greener. If we had this one when it was flush its new growth, you'd still see some bright pink over top of that kind of uh, olivish green. Uh, that's indicative of Acer Livianum. But what makes this one special is that really bright pink spring color. This one leaves out a very bold pink red. Um, it is an exquisite color. It almost has a sheen to it as well, which really gives it something extra. Excellent grower as well. This one's going to be slightly slower than Hot Blonde, but not much. I mean, it still gets out there very, very quickly, over a foot to maybe even a foot of half a growth a year. Excellent grower for us. We found it to be uh, exceedingly popular. Everybody likes the Hot Tamale. I think the color and the name combination have really made it something, but equally as heat tolerant, this one's going to work zones six through nine as well. Again, I have customers growing this in zone five, but we're going to give it a few more years before we label it zone five. Excellent durability of this one though. It is a, uh, an exceptional heat tolerant full sun. I have customers growing this in full sun in California and they called back and they said, I'm going to need six more of these. It is knocking my socks off for color. The, uh, the new growth on it in the midsummer even is just exceptional. And uh, it's one we can't do enough of, honestly, which is true of all three of these. We've been kind of mass producing them here at our nursery. The thing I was shocked about, I remember a customer specifically from Texas that was growing this in a container. Mm -hmm. He had two of them in full sun. And it just blew my mind how well it did for him in full sun in Texas. Yeah. Now, I'm not exactly sure. I don't remember exactly which spot in Texas it was. But still, that would just blew mm. my mind that these plants could be that heat tolerant. Uh, of these plants on the table, hot tamale is the one we've probably been growing close to the longest between it and hot blonde. Mm -hmm. And it's been fantastic for us. And I'll tell you, it's a great grower. It's just one of those plants that's a fantastic tree out in the landscape and garden. So if you're just looking for a tree for a southwest exposure that's going to give you some good fall color, this is going to be one that will perform exceptionally well in those hotter heat situations. Because I know not all of y'all are extreme extreme <laughs> right. and all of these varieties can still do well in the regular garden just think about where your placement is you may have a brick side of your house that needs that gets a little hotter than the rest i know my parents do at maplewood gardens and these olive randoms can handle that heat better mm -hmm. than some of your palmatum varieties now one thing i would like to reiterate all these are going to be more heat tolerant in the ground so if you're keeping them in a pot mm -hmm. there's a lot of factors there to look out for is your container holding more heat we have a whole video on growing japanese maples in containers and also growing in hot zones, you have to be careful in your uh, container that your container isn't holding a lot of residual heat. So that yep. can be an issue. Staying too wet can certainly be an issue. But if you're growing these, these are some of the peak heat tolerant maples you can be growing. Now, I still wouldn't recommend some really reflective hot rocks around them or, you know, a glass that's uh, pretty much mirroring toward these plants. But these are going to give you the upper scale for anything considered a Japanese maple or in that Japanese maple family for heat tolerance. Now, moving on to the next one by, by Masi Oceano, we have Hot Sauce. Now, Hot Sauce was once Nakahara Benny A. That was his evaluation. That was his A, and this was his B. Both are excellent trees with very different traits. Uh, hot Sauce also coming from the same Acer Livianum there in World Maple Park. And Masi Oceano has so many plants there in World Maple Park. And... He's collecting these, basically these hybrids off this Acer Livianum with all of his Palmatum cultivars and making some excellent selections. And Hot Sauce is the quintessential red. I think if this tree was, you know, more well known, it may replace several of our famous Japanese maples in the trade. Like, this is one of the most heat tolerant versions of a red Acer upright you can get. Think of it as the most heat tolerant, exceptional form of fire glow. I mean, Something like that, but even improved genetics to make it even more sun tolerant. Yeah, pretty amazing stuff. I know that we were, when we had Nakahara Benny, when we found out it was B, mm -hmm. we took... We had to get A. We had to get A. <laughs> and uh, once we got A, it was awesome to sit here and compare because now on the olive random spectrum, we now have a red, a really nice spring color one, and a yellow. And you've got... Acer olive random genetics just changing drastically on the spectrum. And it was so cool to finally get the red 
the what people think of mm -hmm. as Japanese maple, that red color in an Acer Olive Varanum. I mean, that's it's really a game changer. It's a super game changer. This one's going to have that bold red. Again, we're shooting this in June, so it's going to be the most green right now. And these have been in a shade greenhouse. They're actually in the ground. The one I have in the ground is actually holding a ton of color right now, even better. But very good at holding that deep, deep red, but being exceptionally sun tolerant. This one's going to have a more almost picked up fiery red. Even in the early spring, this one kind of has more of a fire engine red to it. It's like a pink red almost, so it's even brighter than most. And an exceptional bold red fall color. Great growth rate. It is slightly slower than the hot blonde being the fastest, the tamale being the next, and the hot sauce being the last. But not much. You're going to see this one exceed a foot of growth a year. That's why I like to compare it to an even more heat tolerant fire glow. It's not going to be quite as fast as hot blonde, but it's super durable, super colorful, and it makes the perfect accompaniment to hot blonde and hot sauce. I mean, these three individually right here have unique traits. I hear some people on, on Facebook sometimes are like, oh, there's too many maples and there's nothing new and interesting. I'm like, man, you need to check out some of these ones we're working on because I don't think anybody's done this yet. I mean, I hate to toot our own horn, but this is really unique stuff that hasn't been delved into. As we have hotter you know, people getting into Japanese maples and this kind of thing, it's a plant that's going to be able to push those zones and really expand what Japanese maples can do. And I think hot sauce should be at the forefront of that. I mean, that's a cultivar that uh, it, it could almost, I mean, knock on wood, and I hate to say it, but it could replace many of our tried and true Japanese maples that we're doing. Yeah. For any of these three, people are going to, you know, for most people are going to look at that and say it's a Japanese maple. They're not going to yeah. know it's a Chinese hybrid at all because it has everything you think of with a Japanese maple. Now with hot sauce, again, I'd like to reiterate this one works zone six through nine, and I do have people growing this one also now in zone five, but we want to give it a little bit more time in zone five before we rate that one for zone five cold hardiness. Uh, I think it's going to be able to do that because of the palmatum heritage as well in it. But uh, we're waiting to see. We definitely know this one's going to work good for you, zones six through nine. Again, the parent plant that Masayoshiano had was an Ace Olive Veranum, Variety Olive Veranum. Mm -hmm. And that is a little more uh, cold tolerant, a zone cold, more cold tolerant than Variety Formosanum, sometimes called Cerulatum. And uh, awesome, awesome, awesome plants. But So you probably know these. Let's get into a few you might not know. These may make it into the series. We think they will. These are evaluations that we're working on to add to the Heat Seeker series. We're looking at diversity of characteristic here. Now, the next one up is Hot Rod. Now, this one is an Acer Olive Veranum selection. And it's an Acer Olive Veranum subspecies Formosanum, also called the Acer Olive Veranum Cerulatum, whichever of those species you prefer. Uh, it is that species. They're the Taxonomists same. Taxonomists got to eat too. They keep changing on us. I know. We print that label and it's Olivierum subspecies Formosanum. And then next week you're like, that's incorrect actually. It should be. <laughs> but those guys got to eat too, but they change it way too many times for us to change the labels. I think most people are going with Acer Cerulotum now, but it may change next week when the right person argues the right argument with the key code. It is in the Acer Olivierinum family, certainly, and it, it was originally Acer Olivierinum subspecies Formosanum. Yeah, and the cool thing about this one is it's a Taiwanese selection of their native maple, but in the winter, this one has yellow bark. Yeah, think of this one as the Olivierinum X Bihu. So it is the Bihu version of the Heat Seeker series. That's why we're throwing that hot rod name on it. This one has a very bright golden yellow bark, especially in those winter months. Now in the summer months, we're shooting this again in July. It's late July. Been They're going to be shade. at the greenest stage yeah. and in heavy shade. In sun, this one's going to have an exceptional bright yellow bark. Uh, really, this plant blew me away. It was a selection in Taiwan that just made sense to add to this series because of its durability. And it is exceptional for that bright yellow bark. Now, this being Acer Surreolatum, this one's going to be only recommended zone seven through zones nine. So it's a little less cold tolerant than the Acer Olivierinum subspecies Olivierinum. A little geeky for you there. But just remember with the hot rod, that one's going to be a little bit more zone seven. And that yellow bark is exceptional during the winter. Uh, we've got a few of these in cold frames. We've mm -hmm. never put this outside mm -hmm. in our zone seven here yet. We will eventually once we get a large one, large enough that we think we'll start trialing it with. But the yellow bark on this gives, starts to give you a yellow bark interest, mm -hmm. a winter interest to Acer Olive Veranum. I mean, so we've got yellow in the garden. We've got spring color. we got red. We've got winter interest. Yeah. I mean, this Heat Seeker series is really starting to bring 
some fun and exciting new things to Acer or Olive Raynum that can push you down into zone 9B down there in Florida. Yeah. And maybe even 10A. Yeah, we'll be trying some of these places. in sun and zone 9. Right now, we still recommend mostly protection from that hot afternoon zone 9, but these are definitely going to be on that far upper scale. I mean, I think people in Memphis, people in Alabama, this this is your plant, right? I mean, this yeah. is the way to go. You're going to get the most exceptional heat tolerant maple possible for a Japanese maple style plant. Yeah, and they're extremely heat tolerant. That's the thing that's so awesome about these plants. And uh, this is so cool how you're starting to see all these different characteristics that we found in Japanese maples now in yeah. Chinese maple hybrids. I mean, it, it's really awesome to see that that change happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're always evaluating. These are just a few of them. Uh, one of the next ones up on the table is Acer Olivierinum Hot Chicken. And now this is a working name. Uh, <laughs> you may this, stick with it though. I don't know. I kind of like it. We, we kind of like it. It has more of that Koshi Minnow, Hagoromo, Angel Feather style leaf structure. Mm -hmm. On an Acer Olive Rain. You know Tim's a sucker for those. We referred to him as the, uh, you know, I believe Veritree is listed as a Cecilifolium subgroup. So yeah, this is a whole subgroup. This is the first one we've ever seen in Acer Olivierinum hybrids. Yeah. And uh, we were so excited about this. Uh, when we were in Japan, we got to visit World Maple Park and meet Masayoshi Yano. And it was such a privilege and an honor to go there and walk around with translators and learn about all these different plants. One of the coolest things that he probably doesn't let many people do that he let us do was collect seeds from his Japanese maples at their World Maple Park. And so... This is actually a sister seedling to Nakahara Bini A and B. So the, the hot chicken here is actually from the same famous Acer Olivierinum there in World Maple Park that gave us hot sauce and hot tamale and now maybe hot chicken. So it has a Cecilifolium style trait. This is one that is a hybrid between one of the Cecilifoliums in World Maple Park and the Acer Olivierinum. Distinctly coming off the Acer Olivierinum and showing more Acer Olivierinum like traits but with that heavily divided, interesting style foliage. I mean, it's a, it almost looks like little hands on everything. It's yeah. a really unique style foliage and awesome fall color. This one's going to be more of an olive green most of the season, even spring, but that fall color is an electric red. And this plant is pretty spectacular. Uh, uh, it's sort of in the trial stages mm -hmm. still right now at Mr. Maple. We've got probably 30 or 40 of them grafted. And uh, this is actually the original right here. <laughs> right. That's so, the first seedling. That's the from first Japan. Seed, first seedling from Japan. But we've got about 30 or 40 of them grafted to continue on the evaluation process. But so amazing that we're seeing all these traits we found mm -hmm. in uh, Japanese maples, now in right. these Chinese maple hybrids that can push the zone tolerance to much hotter climates. Yeah, and this is in 2022. We're evaluating other plants. I mean, hot chicken may be the key to the lace leaf Acer Olivierinum. I mean, there's some genetics in there that could, you know, give us a whole new avenue. We like to push the envelope. You know, you've seen uh, people doing cold tolerant Japanese maples. Well, we want something for us down south too. So these are our heat seeker series. These are going to be Japanese maples that are Japanese maples X Chinese maples that give you a little bit more durability. And we're starting to get some really fun diversity in these as well. We're starting to get some unique traits. So we wanted to get this series on camera for you to kind of explain what it is, explain some of the work we're doing here at Mr. Maple and why we're doing it. And I hope this gets you excited about the future of gardening, especially for heat tolerant Japanese maples that are gonna exceed other Japanese maples, even in that durability for the South. These are some cool plants. Let us know in the comments if you're growing any of these and what zone you're in. Yeah. And which one of these would be your favorite from this grouping? Uh, We've worked a lot of time and effort into each of these. I think when we found Hot Blonde, we had two greenhouses full right. of evaluation seedlings. There were several, several thousand plants that went into finding this one. And there were so many olive rainums from the set that we went through and found Hot Blonde from mm -hmm. that were even had slight yellows mm -hmm. to them. It was just the premium best. Yeah, and, and the Hot Blonde was the best of those seedlings. And that's just hot blonde. We and probably end up setting 50 yellow Olivierinums to the side until we got just the right shade. It was the brightest, best of the group. Best border. And just outperformed all the others. 
and the others didn't make it into the trade. So that's kind of how things like this work. A lot, it takes a lot to get to one specific plant, but when we put it out there and we put a name on it, we want it to be something that's special and unique. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video on Acer Olive Ranum and the Heat Seeker series here at Mr. Maple. This is just where we're at currently in 2022. Uh, this may develop further and further uh, as the years go on. I hope it does. Yeah, there's certainly some things we're working on here that may even be added to the table. We wanted to th throw two at least of the teasers in there for future Heat Seeker series. Uh, these three we've all offered before and we will continue to offer these as long as we can. They are probably never going away from ours and I think they should be staples in the industry going forward. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, Acer Olive Rainham just keeps pushing it down. And I think as more people get to know what Acer Olive Rainham can do, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to start being something that people in the South are requesting more and more for. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there on Acer Olivierinum too. They're a very durable plant. Oftentimes that Formosanum can confuse people a little bit for the cold tolerance. The Formosanum is the more zone seven, but the Acer Olivierinum subspecies uh, Olivia Arnum can definitely do, you know, a little bit more cold tolerance. They're easily going to be in that zone six, possibly zone five. Now, one thing to remember, these are Acer Olivia Arnum hybrids with Japanese maple. So you'll see a lot of information out there on the interwebs that say Olivia Arnum can only do this or only do that. These are actually hybrids with Palmatum X Olivia Arnum. I think those are going to be able to eventually push into zone five. We know for a fact those are zone six through nine right now. Uh, you'll see some places out there that don't even rate Olivia Arnum down to zone six. But I can tell you with good confidence, we're here in zone 6B, and I've had hot, I've had each of these go through negative 9 degrees for me in yeah. the garden with, with no problem at all. And Maples the World classifies it as a zone 6, mm -hmm. and uh, they're growing in Philadelphia at the Morse right, Arboretum. Right. Olive Rainum, variety Olive Rainum. So we're very confident on... And then also those have some genetics enhancement for that cold tolerance from the Palmatums. Yeah, you got to remember, like Matt said yesterday, a lot of these plants... People say, oh, this has pseudosibility and influence, makes it more cold tolerant. Right. These have palmatum influence, which actually make the olive rainum more cold tolerant. And a little than... more durable. Gives them a better structure, too, somewhat. Yeah, I think that's one thing people don't talk about enough, mm -hmm. is that olive rainum has a more mechanical yeah. branching. And the Japanese maple has more of that traditional Japanese feel to it. And that's what you're seeing with mm. these selections, are more less of that mechanical branching and more... Uh, Japanese maple-like branching that are unique and different yeah. and have more of that essence of what you think of a traditional Japanese garden. For sure. I love the rigidity that the Olivia Arnum gives them, though. They're a, a, a fast grower, and I would say they're a little bit more uniform. I mean, they're, they're definitely going to have a little bit more uniformity, but what you like about Japanese garden as well. Yeah. So they get a little influence from both. Well, I, I think this uh, video... It's one of our coolest videos that I've had to talk about. I love talking about this stuff because it gets me excited and gets me wanting to look through more and more Acer Olive Rain. Hey, we get Area 51 requests. People say, show us all of Area 51. We'll break it out in some tidbits. So we'll roll this one out with a Heat Seeker series. Definitely check out our Pendulous Treasures series. We're going to be doing one on the Pendulous Treasures collection. We've actually already done it. So I'll be airing around the same time. So definitely check out our Pendulous Treasures video as well. There's a lot of fun things we're doing here at Mr. Maple. Uh, we hope this kind of thing excites you and uh, it gives you some interest into why we're working on some of the things we are here. Take care. God bless. And have an awesome day.